back in the heady days of summer, we made a video which asked the question, can you replace your car with an e-bike? And the answer was, if you live in towns or cities, yeah, pretty much. There are some occasions where four wheels are still incredibly useful, but you can. And if you do, you'll save about 3,000 a year compared to running a car. Perhaps inevitably though, there were a few comments, more than a few, that said, well, that's all well and good, but what about in the winter? So here we are, back again. What would a car-free life look like in the winter? And yes, before you say it, the sun's out, it can't be winter. It really is. It's just a one in a million day here in the UK where the sun is out. And yes, I too wish for the purposes of this video, it was raining as well. If you've not seen the previous video, let me fill you in. Bosch, who are the e-bike industry powerhouse, lent me a couple of e-bikes, including a cargo bike, to try it out. Now, I live in a city, and so most amenities are just a few miles away, and journeys are typically not far, even if in a car, they can take blooming ages. I appreciate, for some of you living in rural areas, that's not going to be the case, but bear in mind that 60% of all car journeys are less than five miles here in Europe, and the average car journey time globally is just 15 minutes. So maybe it is more possible than you think. And yet, I was still nervous about doing away with the car. So I addressed my fears head on. All fears except cold wet weather and interminable darkness. You all right guys? Basically, that's what we're talking about here, isn't it? How feasible is it to replace your car with a bike when it's dark for all but a couple of hours each day and it's pouring with rain all the time, or it's freezing cold and it's snowing. And yes, I appreciate Canadians, sometimes it's minus 40 and only a snowmobile will do, but a lot of us don't have that excuse. No, what we've got here is a time of year where we just wanna be outside less. And so here we are talking about being outside more. So we're at it again, including tackling a particularly Christmassy problem to see if a bike can replace a car even in winter. What do you think guys, can it? Yes. For the record, this is all my own power now. 18 miles an hour. Oh yeah. A big hurdle for me was how much moaning will come from my two kids when they sit on the bike in all weathers too. So they have also borne the brunt of my experiment as well. Uh, guys, where did you find my beloved and massively oversized sunglasses? Mommy gave them to us. Huh. Now let's tackle one of the biggest hurdles first, shall we? The weather. Fortunately, it's also one of the easiest ones to cross. Appropriate clothing, which doesn't sound sexy and well, it might not be unless you have a particular penchant for nylon, but it doesn't have to be all that dorky. A waterproof jacket, Everyone's gonna have one of those. It doesn't need to be cycling specific. This one is, but as I say, it doesn't need to be. I'm personally not a massive advocate of high vis. I'd much rather have a decent set of lights and some reflective fabric on there. But I appreciate many of you are, and that's totally cool. It's down to the individual. Now what you might not have, but would definitely be a worthwhile investment, is a pair of these waterproof trousers. I think these literally cost me a tenner about 15 years ago. Um, and uh, I don't really wear them very much, which is why they look like they're in immaculate condition. But you wear those over your normal trousers. These are considerably newer and more expensive, and you wear them instead of your normal trousers. And I don't think you look like a total dork in them. However, if someone listened closely, you might sound like a total dork as you rustle past. Then uh, gloves but then you've already got those anyway, haven't you? A uh, hat, a thin one that you can wear underneath your helmet. And lastly, a pair of waterproof boots would definitely be a good investment. And then for the kids, well, Albert and Cecily have got two waterproof fleece-lined onesies that they complain are too hot, no matter how grim the weather. And then that's it. Not exactly a lengthy kit list. Should we do a skid? Should we do a skid? No. Now there is a certain irony to cycling in winter when it's cold 
and still getting a real sweat on. But it happens, particularly under loads of layers of clothes and windproofs and waterproofs. And it's here where the e-bike really undeniably has an advantage. And that's just that you can let the motor do the work and still ride up steep climbs like this at the intensity of a casual walk. I still got four gears to go as well. Now at this point we should probably talk a little bit more about motors and e-bikes specifically if you're not familiar with them. So the motor down here provides assistance as you pedal and only while you pedal up to a certain speed at which point the motor legally has to cut out. Now what that speed is depends on which country you live in but here in the UK and in Europe it's restricted to 25 kilometers per hour or 16 miles an hour above that you're on your own. Now there are different levels of assist that you can choose from on the handlebars. So in addition to off on these Bosch motors, you've also got eco mode, tour mode, sport mode, and turbo mode. Now this particular motor, the cargo line, is designed for utility bikes and cargo bikes. And in eco mode, it will give you 60% of your power back as additional power, right up to 400% more power in turbo mode, which is, means that anyone can ride up a steep hill on a fully laden bike, but you can also still get the benefits of doing that exercise. Now, the more power you ask for from the bike, then the faster you're gonna go through your batteries. But on here, I've got two of Bosch's 500 watt hour power packs, so you don't need to worry for miles and miles. In fact, you probably only need to worry if you decide to cycle to your in-laws for Christmas. Of course, you can choose different bikes with different characteristics and strengths. For example, on bikes with newer and more advanced head units, there's a whole load of other functionality built in, including security measures, sat-nav, and also a range predictor, which measures battery levels against riding mode and if you've got a route planned. My lights are also running off the central Bosch battery too. It's all integrated. Just switch on and go. Just like a car, in fact. No faffing with little LEDs, just one charger. School run. You can see how cold it is because my eyes are running. But um, it's kind of not really worth getting on the bike for it because we can walk. But it's just more fun, isn't it? How are you doing, guys? Good! <laughs> I am never excited at the prospect of having to run errands in my car, which is an understatement. But the novelty and the enjoyment of doing it by bike has not worn off yet. And in fact, the satisfaction's only increased as we've headed to winter because more people rely on their cars in the winter months. Traffic gets way worse, which means I end up bypassing more of it. See? So long, suckers! As a cyclist, I'm very conscious about maintenance of my delicate and precious bikes in the winter months, which is in contrast to when I drive my car and I don't give it a second thought. When it comes to e-biking, I'm much more along the kind of car school of maintenance, which is to say, I don't do very much. And that's for good reason. And then because the bike has a motor, being lightweight is less of a priority. So instead, it can be more robust and more durable. So for example, this has got all of the gears internally built into the rear hub, so there's no exposed moving parts, and it's shifted electronically, so there are no cables to go rusty. Plus, you can see from here, it also doesn't have a conventional bike chain on it either. This one has a belt drive, which doesn't need oiling and cannot go rusty either. Now, I'm not suggesting that you buy an expensive e-bike and then go leave it in your back garden all winter, but I am saying, you probably don't need to worry about it too much. Now, something that popped up in the comments section under that previous video was safety, particularly when you're transporting your kids on a bike. And I get that, I do get that. I mean, there's been so much advertising around car safety standards in particular that we can believe that we're invincible when we're in a motor vehicle. But that's misplaced, isn't it? I mean, statistically, there are more fatalities and casualties in cars than on bikes, certainly here in the UK anyway. And whilst that, of course, doesn't mean that cycling is safer, it's certainly not something you ever think about when you drive. And so I also don't think you should think about it when you ride either. And the other thing is that whilst you might be protecting your children in one way by putting them inside a car, you're also exposing them to different risks, like pollution levels, both city-wide, but also 
pollution is more concentrated inside a car than it is outside. And then lastly, personally, and very anecdotally, I have noticed that people tend to drive around you differently when you're riding a cargo bike. They just seem to treat you like a vulnerable road user, which is good. I mean, that's kind of how it should be, shouldn't it? Last time I tried to showcase the load carrying capacity of a cargo bike, but my goji berry bush wasn't terribly cumbersome and the 50 odd kilos of compost and beer that I was carrying was really dense. So what happens if you have to carry an oversized object? Well, we're gonna find out. No, not, not Connor, we're gonna go buy a Christmas tree. Yeah, Christmas tree would be good, sir. Yeah. I've actually reserved an eight foot one. Eight footer, there we go then. So I have plugged Rainbow Wood Farm into the Kobe Bike Bosch smartphone hub. So we've now got sat nav dedicated to bikes. It's gonna point in the direction all the way there. Oh, it's gonna pick up a lovely Nordman. It's not a traditional variety, apparently they're too prickly, according to the farm. Is that, farm is that right? Yeah. Check you out. Right, to Rainbow Wood. <laughs> I love it. Oh, this is brilliant, this. I'm in love. Just in love for this bike. Riding around on e-bikes, whilst your top speed rarely gets up to the actual speed limit of the roads, except on downhills, I think your average speed is probably quite similar to if you were driving. And particularly today, cruising across town, we use different routes. We've got different infrastructure available to us. And so we can bypass traffic and even when riding up a massive hill to get to Connor's Christmas tree farm, I reckon we're probably going to get here sooner on bikes. Oh, there it is! Christmas trees! A one with a good smell it needs to, you know, smell smell Christmassy, it's that. But this one actually hasn't got. Nostalgia, I think a traditional one has the smell. Yeah, so that's, that's the trade-off, isn't it? I'm still looking for a stronger scent. <laughs> Look at the cider. Very much. Thank you. I'm well used to managing a heavy load in a crosswind side. <laughs> major brownie points. Uh, hey! The limits to using a cargo bike for the kind of chores that I've been doing on it does come when you need to take both children somewhere and stuff. It's kind of supermarket shopping or kids, isn't it really? Or for me, something that I thought about and it kind of upset me if I thought I was gonna miss out on it, is sticking the kids' bikes in the back of the car and then driving to the local BMX track or to go mountain biking. However, there are other options out there. So you can always rent a car, it's pretty easy and pretty cheap. And then there's car clubs as well, which are designed specifically for people who are car free and they're optimized for sort of shorter regular city journeys so i had a bit of a look i found one where membership was 60 pounds a year and then it costs six pounds an hour to hire it which seems pretty reasonable although when you think about maybe an afternoon at the bmx track you're then looking at 24 quid which sounds like actually that's a reasonable amount of money but if you put it in context of how much money you spend a year on a car without even thinking about it, the fact that having a bike instead of a car would potentially save you three grand, 24 quid for a few hours doesn't sound that bad at all. In fact, you're saving that much money, you could rent yourself a posh car when you went on holiday and you'd still have change left over. So maybe it's less about what sacrifices you have to make if you did get rid of a car and actually just thinking about doing things slightly differently. It's the best ride ever. Since there's some sarcasm going on, which I wasn't really expecting. So have I put my money where my mouth is? Well, kind of. I do still have my car. It sits forlornly outside my house for most of the week 
but it is there and it is still useful. However, I do have my name down for an e-bike though. Why? Well, the main reason, the principal motivation is because it's just genuinely good fun. Statistically, we humans spend on average four and a half years inside cars over our lifetimes. And I think that time could be better spent. Genuinely, riding bikes is a fun thing to do. I'm not sure I can think the same thing very often when I'm driving my car. And yes, while a car might open up certain options that you might not have with a bike, make no mistake, on two wheels you can go places that you wouldn't or can't go in a car. There are places that I wouldn't ever bother driving to on a weekend, for example, because I'd get stuck in traffic or because I'd be stressed about parking when I got there. On a bike, you don't have that. And yes, there is the weather, but Come on, is it often as bad as you think it's gonna be? I'm not so sure. Make sure you let me know in the comments section though what you think, whether or not you still need convincing about whether or not you can do without a car and replace it with a bike. Get involved in the comments section down below.